G'day and welcome to another Yarara to You Clontarf segment. You've probably already noticed I've got some binoculars. And the reason I've got some binoculars is because today we go to the races. It's the 2020 Yarara Staff Lunchtime Walk Handicap. And the runners are coming into view now as they head down the back straight. And it's Miss Lisa on the inside. On our outside, we've got Miss Deb, caught three wide. Miss Fleur, and the widest of the four runners is Miss Chris. Miss Lisa just in front. Miss Fleur moving into second. Miss Deb not far away, making a bit of a run down the outside. Miss Chris. Now, Miss Lisa using her mass teaching knowledge here to advantage, sticking to the inside as they sweep around the bend. That means the other runners will cover more ground than her. They get around the turn and head into the straight and the jockey's doing a wonderful job with social distancing here, keeping themselves 1.5 metres apart. It's Miss Lisa just in front, then Miss Fleur right down the outside, Miss Chris making a bit of a run just behind the Miss Deb poised to strike. It's Miss Lisa, Miss Chris flying home strongly. Miss Lisa looks at the line and an amazing burst of speed by Miss Lisa. She wins, Miss Chris second, Miss Fleur third, then Miss Deb. What a great race. Of course, the ladies weren't racing, but what they did do is demonstrate how easy and simple it can be for you to get some daily exercise. It's as simple as going for a 10 or 15 minute walk. We know a lot of you play competitive sport and you probably exercise pretty full on two or three times a week with your trainings and match days. But on days when you're not training, don't just do nothing. Do something even if it's as simple and easy as going for a 10 or 15 minute walk. And those of you that aren't into sport at all, well you can keep yourself fit and healthy with that daily 10 or 15 minute walk. So now, I'm gonna go for my lunchtime walk. And the man gets out of the gates quickly and it looks like the clock. Then I have the money from the currency from Qatar, which is the real. This is how they dress there. The real. 10 real. If I come to Australia today, I can at least buy myself a coffee from Macus. It is $4.20. the vatu now this is 400 vatu that's the currency that they use in vanuatu now this is 400 vatu 200 and 200 and together this is actually only five dollars this week in our words of the week we are looking at the language of money now, our first word is the word currency. Currency is a large word that is used to describe not just the money of Australia, but money all over the world, because not all countries have the same type of money. Let us spell it. C-U-R-R-E-N-C-Y, currency. Now, the next word is the word sense. In Australia, we've got many coins, but only a few represent cents. That'll be the 5, 10, 20, and 50 cent coins. Let's spell it. C-E-N-T-S, cents. Our next word is the word dollar. In Australian currency, we have a 5, 10, 20, 50, and 100 dollar notes. Let's spell it. D. O L L 
A R dollar. As we have been learning about the different notes and coins in our Australian currency, hopefully you can see how important it is knowing the different value of money. How about the next time you go to the shops or need to buy anything, you keep in mind how much it all ends up costing and the type of notes and coins you use to pay for it. Hello. We're with Miss Moesha at Girls Academy. What are some things Girls Academy uses money for? We use our money for leadership camps, toiletry stuff, weekly shopping, food, stationery orders. Hi, Mr. Jeremy. What do you like to spend money on? Oh, good question, mate. Hello, Mr. Zane. What do you like to spend money on? It's pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory, isn't it? Good old KFC. Mr. Tyson shouted. We are starting a new topic. I'll give you a hint. It may change your life. Get it? Change. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kane Gilmore from Charles Darwin University. I'll teach the vet courses here in Alice Springs. And today I'd like to give you a little bit of a um, little session on playing a bit of guitar, um, how to build some speed in your fingers to get play faster, and a little scale group of notes to make you play and be a rock god. Um, so up here I've put um, on, the on the whiteboard a picture of the guitar. And if you look here, these are your finger numbers, one, two, three, four. And if you put your finger in between these metal fret pieces here, this is a picture of the guitar, but that way. So it's a little confusing. If I follow me, finger number one, I'd put in here, number two in here, number three in here, and number four in here. So, in here, one. Third finger, and that's where you, that's every finger has a fret. It makes it easier and faster to play. All right, what are we going to do? First little exercise is a blues scale, and I'm going to mark some spots where we're going to do some notes. Where I've coloured them in, it's actually the, the name of the, the scale, it's the name. So wherever I put this dot will be the name of the scale. So it's a blue scale, and here I'm going to put it on the third fret, and it will be in the key of G. So it's a G blue scale. Now how you run around it and follow what I'm doing is you put, I'm going to yell out the finger numbers and we're going to change strings. So the first number is one and then four. So I'll go finger one and four. One, three, one, third finger, change string. One, three, one, three again, change string. One, four, one. So it goes like this. One, four, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, four, one. And you can play that backwards. Okay, so. Now you don't have to do it there. If you learn this, if you get used to this pattern, 
move it around. Change where you start from. <laughs> You don't have to just do those notes, you can stretch them. And you can fill it in between. So between the, the numbers, so one, four, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, three, four. Have fun with it. That's the blues scale in any key. Tune in next time and I'll give you an exercise to play a little bit faster with your fingers. Hi, Miss Chris from the Christian Studies team. With another part of the Easter story, I pray that you are well, making strong choices and enjoying time with your family. Last time, our story was Jesus having a special meal with his disciples, the last meal that he would have with them. When they finished eating, Jesus went to a garden to pray. Let's read the story from Matthew 26. Jesus took his disciples out of the city of Jerusalem to a place called Gethsemane the Garden of Gethsemane. He said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, James and John, along with him. Then he said to them, my soul is very sad. Stay here, keep watch with me. He went a little further knelt down and prayed to his father. He said, Father, help me do what you want me to do. When he went back to his disciples, he found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for just one hour? Watch and pray. Three times, Jesus went away to pray, and each time he came back, the disciples were sleeping. Are you still sleeping? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over. Get up, let's go. Here comes the one who is handing me over. Prayer is talking to God like he's your best friend, your family. Remember, Jesus is your brother and God is our loving, caring parent. Let's look at another way of thinking about prayer. The five W's of prayer. Who can pray? Anyone can pray. You can pray. Grandmother, auntie, uncle, grandfather, little cousin, niece or nephew, anyone can pray. What? What can you pray about? Anything. We can pray about anything. We can pray about everything. Pray to our awesome, loving God. Pray for family. Pray for things we need and for help with things. Pray about our worries, our sad times and happy times. Pray about sick people and remember to thank him for all that he gives us too. When? When can we pray? Any time. In the morning when you wake up. At night when you're going to sleep, any time, all day long. Where? Where can we pray? Anywhere. We can pray at church, at home, at school, on the footy field or the basketball court, when you're fishing or hunting. 
when you're in the shower or in your room alone. Why? Why do we pray? Because our Father God wants us to pray, to talk with him about anything and everything. Let's pray to him now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Until next time, God be with you and your family. again you are a students. I've been collecting some descriptive writing pieces written by past students and as I read through parts of these stories or a paragraph or a few sentences I'd like you to tell me what sort of picture it creates in your mind as you read it. Perhaps it could be any one of these five senses or even more. Is it sight? Is it hearing? Is it touch? Is it taste? Is it smell? Well, the first story I found was one that included a wombat. And here's the description of the wombat. No one saw wombat for a while. Then one day, when Madeline and Finn were swinging in the breeze, they saw the grass part and out came wombat. He was looking as shiny and fit as you could imagine. His fur was smooth and brown, and on his back was a huge new green ant nest. Now, what pictures do we get in our mind as we read that? Is it to do with sight, hearing, touch, taste or smell? Now, listen to this student's story about going fishing at Roper Bar. All of us kids couldn't wait to go swimming. Mum and Dad grabbed the fishing gear and baited their fishing lines. Mum whirled her fishing line into the water and smiled happily at us kids and at Dad. We were not allowed to swim in this river because it is very dangerous. These crocodiles are so scary because they are huge, very black, with sharp claws, yellow teeth and big clumsy feet. Now here's another story where a girl describes what she and her friends did over the weekend. On Saturday, they decided to go fishing and this is what she says. We stopped at a swimming place called Deep Blue Sea to swim. It was deep and nice blue water, little fish in there swimming under the water. It has sand and around the water it has rocks. Then we went to Billabong to catch some bait. There were lots of trees around the Billabong. There were turtles in the water and then we went off to Bingbong and we fished there all day. And then she talks about Sunday. On Sunday afternoon we went to the shop to buy our drinks. Then we went up Tank Hill with our bikes for a ride. It was hot. We could smell smoke. There were fires burning. We saw the fire from the top of the hill. When we finished our drinks, we used our drink bottles to fill with bush plums. We got big rocks to hit the tree so the bush plums could fall down. Then we picked up the soft ones from the ground when they fell off the tree. The bush plums taste nice then. We went back down to the swimming pool to cool off. It had lots of kids there asking for some bush plums, so we shared with them. Now, when you're writing a story or even telling a story, think of the words that you can use, the descriptive words that will create a picture in the mind of your listener or your reader. Happy writing!
What up? Welcome, Welcome back. back. Let's recap on the words from week four. Chaba, meaning witchery grub. Yiramba, meaning honey eggs. Alangwa, meaning bush banana. Yalka, meaning bush onion. To complete this week's word sheet, we would like for you to circle the correct word for witchetty grub, bush banana, honey ant and bush onion. Well, thanks for tuning in, you mob. Stay safe. Look after your families. And we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. time. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, welcome to Urara to You Music. Now today we're going to be learning how to build our own kazoo. Now a kazoo is an American instrument that is part of the percussion family. And what we need, we need a cardboard tube, so the inside of a toilet roll, like this, a pencil, some rubber bands, or just one rubber band really, is all you need unless you want to make more than one, a pair of scissors, and an old plastic bag. I've got this old sweet packet here. So it needs to be quite sort of crinkly plastic. All right, the first thing you need to do is grab your pencil and your cardboard tube and make a hole in the middle. Don't go all the way through, just go through one side. Okay, and the second thing, you need to cut this plastic. So it needs to be like a big square that covers the end of the tube. Place the part, so yeah, it needs to be about this big. Place that over the top and grab your rubber band. There we go. And to make it real tight, we wrap it around twice. There we go. So, we need to vibrate this last bit here, which is called the membrane, okay? So it's a bit like a drum, drum skin. Now let's see if it works. Hello, hello, hello. hello. You can hear that making my voice sound funny. So yeah, there you go. Oh, you can try, try and do a tune with it. So yeah, you need to shout quite loud and put on quite a deep voice in order to get the sound. But there you go, a homemade kazoo. And you can decorate the tube as well, so you can paint it or draw on it and make it colourful. Yeah, there we go. Cheers for watching, see you next time. to do my mum's family meatball recipe so you need all this stuff on the table to make spaghetti and meatballs pretty much what you do is you chop your onion and you put it into the, the 500 grams of mince and then you add uh, two four tablespoons of tomato sauce and two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and you mince it all together you make it into a patty and then you make it into meatballs and then you chuck it on the fry pan so that's how you make uh, my mum's uh, spaghetti meatballs about four tablespoons of sauce, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce into the meatball. We're going 
gonna we're gonna mix that around again, okay? So now we're gonna use the flour. And then you're gonna add an egg. Mr. Dave forgot to add an egg. And Mr. JT ain't gonna forget it. I'm gonna crack it on the side of this bad boy. Put him in there. Eesh. Fellas, now we've got spaghetti, we're going to put it in the boiling water, we've added a little bit of salt and we've added a bit of uh, oil, so we're just going to put in the spaghetti and it's going to cook for 12 minutes. So we're just going to make sure the meatballs are all ready. We're going to cook it for a while longer and then we're going to add the pasta. Alrighty fellas and ladies, we are now have my mum's favourite uh, recipe of meat, spaghetti meatballs. So uh, I hope the morning Fellas, enjoy and uh, try and make it at home and see how you go. So stay safe and I'll see you later. Good morning, I'm Shannon Morton with UR News. Last Friday morning, UR held its special end of the year ceremony. Congratulations to all the students who received awards and special congratulations to Aaron Palmer who won the principal awards for student of the year and to Caitlin Armstrong for the completion of her NTCET certificate. A special thank you to all our sponsors. Over the holiday break, we are having our main computer room updated. It has been over 20 years since the last upgrade. Looking forward to seeing the new room at the start of 2017. Last Monday night, the 20th November, Kantaf held its special league night at Ansec of Alice Springs. Aaron Palmer did a fantastic job promoting the event on Sun FM radio station Saturday Sports Show. Ellie Melky and co-host for the morning, Robin Lamley, interviewed Aaron. Although he was nervous, he was able to calm his nerves and spoke very well as he discussed Kantaf, Yara and league night. It was a great night. Everyone played the game in good spirits and had loads of fun. The RR team were excellent, trying their hand at new sport for most of them, and they managed to beat the more experienced CMS team to bring home the principal cup. Everyone that attended should be congratulated on their efforts and for their outstanding behavior. Up the Brumbies. Good morning. Hey, hey. Welcome back to Urara!